welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, yesterday, I made what well, the recording I did I can't remember what number it was 173 I actually did a relaxation slash sleep session so instead of just chatting and stuff I did something different for this but not different for me if that makes sense um, I did something that is what I've been doing for a long time and I thought it would just be nice to maybe mix it up a little bit and perhaps do a few more of those in the future not today but in the future um, as well as some other stuff, you know. Maybe reading some books and, and doing things a little bit different. As well as, you know, chatting uh, the way that I do also. So there's going to be times I'll do this. I'll just talk, and so I'm I'm planning to do more. I think, and something that I'm not going to say inspired me because it annoyed me. But I got a a testimonial or a, a comment saying that. I used to be professional. Um, they said it seems as if I don't even care anymore. And that's a little bit painful to read, to be honest. Uh, admittedly, I, I was constipated at the time. So I had a bit of stomach problems. I was sitting on a toilet. And uh, straining while I was reading it, so it's a bit painful. Apparently, I don't take things serious enough, and I thought it was understood that I'm not taking these seriously. I'm not being all serious with them. Doesn't mean that I don't. And take what I do seriously and that doesn't mean I don't care it just means that I'm just being playful and uh, I guess it's not always going to be to everybody's pleasure I suppose and and I was trying to think how has of my recordings changed since I started doing them? And maybe I haven't. Maybe I just said something in a particular recording that muffled. My, is it muffled a few feathers? I don't know. Um, ruffled, riffled, raffled. Which. only happens if you're taking yourself seriously so my advice when you listen to these recordings is leave that that part of you that takes things seriously or that takes yourself seriously leave that behind 
let that go press the pause button off of that and then you know you can listen to this with a more relaxed state because otherwise it might not be as relaxing and enjoyable as it might have been if you were able to just let go and feel relaxed and you may say yeah but juicy JJ I'm listening to it because I'm not relaxed and I want to be relaxed which is a fair point so and that's part of the reason why I'm not shouting because that would be less relaxing I'm trying to be you know have a relaxing tone um, I haven't got music blaring out in the background because that might not be that relaxing so I'm trying to you know this is going to be a few background sounds uh, it's quite difficult to avoid that really especially when you've got a big squeaky chair like mine it squeaks proper squeaky there's a fridge in the kitchen humming away same tune wouldn't mind if it was a bit creative you know the Popeye Tune to the Popeye ca cartoons would be nice. Just, just something different. Maybe just a different chord instead of uh, maybe. Uh, 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 I don't know. And there's the birds and the trees in the garden, but they're not awake yet. But sometimes they are awake when I make these recordings. I'm doing this relatively early. It's 17 minutes past 2 a.m. on this Sunday, the 7th of July 2019. And I just clattered my can of Coke. And you may say, but King Jason, how can you be drinking Coke as a stimulant? That's not going to help you sleep. Yeah, but I'm not trying to sleep. I'm making this recording for you, not for me. Because I can't make recordings when I'm asleep. I have to be awake and alert in order to do them. But saying that sometimes especially when I do the like the one I did yesterday or the whisper hypnosis whis what they call deep sleep whisper hypnosis podcast at that sometimes I find myself kind of drifting like really drifting but luckily they're not too long they're 20 minutes roughly but when I do the weekly sleep hypnosis and they last longer maybe 40 minutes plus I do find myself drifting proper like uh, kind of just as if all the all the stress is just disappeared from my body including like the natural good stress you know the stuff that helps you stand up and be alert and you know function it gets to a point where just like everything just leaves it's like you know there's no energy left it's uh
be like sneezing six or seven times in a row and you blow your nose and you think wow there can't be any more snot left in my body is it something like that might offend someone I don't know that could be that sounds like quite a professional thing to say that's something a doctor would say surely no, I actually had a doctor once I had a doctor that sounds okay I had I was put on medication this is back in 19, 19, 19, uh, 1995 maybe, or maybe 96, or 97, one of them, and the doctor was giving me antidepressants. And he was saying, uh, the doctor, uh, the the medication may cause, and he said like some technical word. I said, what? He said, it might cause, uh, and he said it again, and, I'm a, and I didn't understand what he was saying. Like the word that he was using, he was using descriptions that didn't understand I understood the words it might cause but when he said the words after that I didn't it wasn't that I wasn't listening I didn't club my ears up or stick my head out the window going blah 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 it's, I was actually there sat in the chair I looked at him I didn't need to look at him because I was quite close I could hear and um, I didn't understand what he said and he was getting frustrated so this is a highly professional man unlike me this is proper professional you know a doctor someone that has to study for forever to be qualified and then you know they're basically heroes you know they sort of spend their life helping people and saving lives which is amazing so that's who this doctor was and after about five attempts of trying to explain to me what it was that the medication may cause because he kept going you know down there down there it might you know cause uh, dribble, dribble down there. I said, "What?" And then he, then he, he kept got louder and louder. And eventually, he said, "It might cause you to piss yourself." I was like, "What?" I said, "What? You, what?" He said, "No, just a little bit. A dribble. It might, you know, some." I said, "Oh, I'll have that then." Yes, that's a that's a great. I mean, it didn't, never did. I never had that problems. But, um, and that was a professional person that used that expression to me. Might cause you to do wee wees. Um, and I would never use that kind of language. I mean, I was, I was shocked. I wasn't shocked. I was, I was, to be fair, I was more concerned about. I didn't want to be in a bed with plastic covers or plastic over the mattress. It's like going back to being a teenager. You know, I just used to have all that when I was a kid. The thing is, it wasn't. It's, it just seemed to be... I might have really wet the bed, I don't think. Well, I did, I have. I wasn't really the standard kid. I, I wasn't really into... Because when you wet the bed, it's unconscious. And it's no one's fault at all. There's zero... I said no one. There's not even... Not not even the... The, <laughs> the traffic warden's fault. Well, it's no one's fault. But... 
it's uh, traffic wardens should be punished. No, I'm joking. I don't drive, so I don't care. Um, I never, I don't, I think I only remember ever soiling the bed once. And I'd been unwell, a bad stomach and that. But, God, this is going bad, isn't it? I'm talking about soiling the bed. Yeah, I prefer to I prefer to do stuff like that when I was fully clothed. It's more fun. <laughs> I was uh I need to put an X ray in against this one. Yeah, I can't tell you the next story. The next story is quite explicit but um I'm going to make it, I'm going to dumb it down and make it friendly. Um, <laughs> I was, I had a night of, um, I had an enjoyable evening with the most wonderful person that you could ever meet. A joy to behold. And, uh, I was asleep and this other person was also asleep and I'm, I'm asleep I'm just lying there and I wake up to what I can only describe as someone pouring cold tea out of a teapot onto my leg but it wasn't actually not cold it wasn't cold was it it was warm <laughs> warm, tea. warm tea cold cold it wasn't cold at all and this had never happened before you know what the thing is it wasn't me if you know what I mean it wasn't and I was a complete gentleman. Well, at first of all, I pushed her out of the way and, you know, avoided the, uh, st the jet. And I spent the, re the rest of the night, I think I might have slept on the floor. Um... And then I woke up in the morning and I was like, hello darling, how my dear, how are you beautiful, are you okay? And she was looking at the bed sheets, which on my side were wet. And she was the sister of one of the waitresses I worked with. Now I thought I was being um, respectful uh, and just kind to not mention that she had had a little accident and stuff. So I, I said nothing. I thought I just, you know, I go and get a McDonald's breakfast and you know just got on with my life. What I didn't realise is that she thought it was me that had had the accident. And I didn't know that she was going to tell her sister. And I didn't know that her sister was going to um, joyfully spread the good news to my colleagues. So that was a very awkward, awkward, awkward situation. 
I can imagine the comments I'm going to get. How am I supposed to go to sleep when you're talking about stuff like that? I've never been so insulted in all my life. Oh, he really should be. God, if this is the worst you've ever had, then you've had it good. I've never felt... Ugh. So if you're out there listening and you're the person, <laughs> it was you, not me. I've always tried to be, like, you know, respectful when it comes to things like relationships and disasters or whatever you want to call them. And not sort of talking about what's happened and I just find that demeaning because I've had it done to me and I didn't like it you know I had it done to me when I was 16 a girl that I'd been dating or seeing for some reason decided to tell her friend about me and her friend decided to take it upon herself to try and mock me in public so that was that was like oh no didn't like that so I suppose in a way I learned a valuable lesson to show some respect for somebody that you spend that you share a, a special moment with now wait a minute I might not have learned anything yeah, I got that wrong. No, I didn't learn at all. I just learned it wasn't nice. No, I've, I'm usually quite good. I say usually. I mean, I can't remember. I can't remember what. See, women. What's the difference between women, women and men? I've forgotten. There's something. It's, uh, it's something to do with the ribs, isn't it? That women have, women don't have ribs, but men have ribs. Or is it women have one rib? I don't know. I know it's, there are some differences. All men have to have. Men can't bleed for seven days without a transfusion. I shouldn't say that. I'll take that back. I'll take that back. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really good that we can talk like this and <laughs> chat. I actually had a bit of a weird week, a weird, bit of a weird week, in a sense. Um, I built my websites again, and then a couple of days ago, I destroyed them all again. So yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just not going to bother with the websites anymore. I was going to start a business, I was going to try and, not, I'm still, you know, it's still going to be a free service, but I was going to put some of the archives, some of the older recordings and make them available on my website for people to buy for a pound each, but still, so, there'd be 80% of my recordings would be free and 20% would be available to buy 
but I changed my mind. I thought, you know what I'll do, I'll put, I won't change my mind till I put at least 70 hours of work into it, into building the websites, and then I'll, then I'll change my mind. So I didn't make any recordings for over a week, maybe 10 days, 9 days. It was the 27th, I think was the last recording until yesterday. And yesterday was the 6th of July and I think there was 30 days in June, or was it 31 days? Yeah. So it's about yeah, it's at least ten days probably, or nine, nine or ten days between. So yeah, I'm kind of back to well, what I did. What I did. Oh, this is this is brilliant. Not I. Uh, so I deleted a lot of the podcast. Not a lot, but. It was 236 episodes spread along the various podcasts I've got, which I deleted and made them available on the websites. So once I deleted the websites, I put those podcasts back on, those podcast episodes back and... Uh, kind of re redone two of the podcasts so everything's in order so I kind of re-uploaded the the sessions and it's quite weird because I've had yesterday I had three and a half thousand or three thousand eight hundred downloads on Friday Barber. and yesterday Saturday it's, it's still Saturday to me because I'm still awake but officially it's Sunday so the 6th which is Saturday I had 10,000 downloads um, plus I did two new recordings was it two? Yeah, you know, three new recordings during the night I did the Let Me Boy to Sleep Deep Sleep Whisper and a relaxing, relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. As I did one there. So if you want to, if you do, um, if you're looking for kind of more professionalism, those ones are pretty good. The Deep Sleep Whisper ones... I sometimes say a few silly things, but uh, because they're only 20 minutes long, I usually get down to business and, you know, keep a straight face when I'm doing it. With a nose like mine, I'm never going to have a straight face, but you know what I mean. It's uh, I have a very voluptuous face. Very busty. Got very busty cheeks. <laughs> I'm very, <laughs> I am. I've got a lovely, lovely... I don't know, my face. I think I've lost weight in my face. I haven't got as many chins as I used to have. Yet, I'm heavier than I used to be. Oh, we're all heavier than we used to be, aren't we? I'm not. I'm not heavier than I used to be. I used to be 18 stone, and now I'm only 11 stone. Yeah, but you used to be lower than 11 stone, didn't you? No, I, when you were born. Okay, so you can win that argument. It's, it's easy if you can go far enough back. I think, because I'm now at 98 kilos, and I was 101, I think, at the beginning of the year. I think, or I'm not sure, at least at the end of last year. And... I do want to. I, I do want to lose weight. The only part of me, I mean, 
I might be repeating myself, but it's hard to know if I'm repeating myself because I take no notice of what I've said. I mean, right now, I don't know what I've said. I mean, literally, I could repeat myself. Literally, I could repeat <laughs> myself. I don't take any notice of what I said. I just blurt it out and it's gone. And so there's a chance I could repeat myself, but my stomach, I've basically got a beer belly. But I don't drink beer. I don't touch alcohol anymore. I generally don't. I, I don't know what it is. I used to drink every single day, practically through my 30s and <laughs> onwards through probably up to 45. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, so both. So probably about fifteen years, but for during my thirties, I was very prolific drinking every day, every evening. I used to kid myself that I never got drunk, but I did. Um, and but not drunk, drunk. But I did sometimes. Uh, but generally it was just kind of to blot out the day to I was kind of I used to fool myself that I was relaxing but I wasn't it wasn't relaxing me it was just kind of turning my brain off well kind of although my brain doesn't seem to work to turn my brain off alcohol it just gets a bit more distorted that's the reason I don't need to take drugs because my brain's already a bit um, I wouldn't say scrambled but it's a bit uh, a bit uh, a bit mm, you know a little bit sometimes so I like to be sober um, I don't mean just like not drinking. I like to just feel aware of what's going on. Uh, I like to feel that I'm in touch with my surroundings and how other people are acting and interacting with each other and whether or not I need to remove myself from that situation because I'm you know I'm quite sensitive to humans in person but I've got this belly okay that's what I was talking about beer belly but I don't drink but the belly's still there now I don't believe like that I used to be 13 and a half stone before I started my college course in 2007 so before I trained to become a counsellor and now you if this is the first time you're listening you trained to become a counsellor after all the rubbish that you just said in the last 20 minutes how can you have been a counsellor you know what this is true I think it was about 2009 I went on Facebook or it might have been 2010 I started doing a bit of work in, in London for my friend it's just I wasn't it wasn't work I was just helping out in the comedy club and I owed him I owed him money so I was kind of just sort of trying to kind of pay off the interest really by going out there and into London and helping out in the office and stuff so I started getting to know a few more of the comedians I was speaking to them on the phone and 
I was sticking around at night and you know getting to know a few of them because uh, I hadn't been involved in the comedy for quite a while so we got known a little bit that I was you know I can't well basically I went on Facebook and I saw some people talking about me and these were people from my past because I used to be very involved in the comedy circuit back in my early 20s and I had a bit of a reputation for being um, I don't know it's, I, I've probably talked about this in the past but yeah I had a rep I had a reputation that's all I'll say and the there was like two or three people talking about me on Facebook and they were just like someone posted something and they said is it true that Jason's or someone said whatever happened to Jason because they all knew that I worked at the comedy club in the past I was involved in it and helped out and stuff as well as I just lived lived comedy for a long time I didn't care what, what I had to do I just wanted to be part of it and uh, for 10 years and someone said oh I don't know I, you heard about you heard from Jason do you know what he's up to oh last thing I heard he was a therapist now the comments that came afterwards was I don't know if it's upsetting but it was like oh that's what they thought of me and I was sort of saying oh my god how can someone like him be a therapist and I won't say what some of the stuff they said. Uh, and I thought, you know what? We can change, you know? We can not. Because I used to... Not care what I said. And you may think, oh, you're still like that now. But trust me, this is... Uh, I'm really not. I used to be very... Um... I don't even know what, what the word is. Adult, explicit, um, offensive. I suppose I used to like, on purpose, I used to do that for a while when I first started. Closed down a few clubs. and But then I learned from it and I, I changed and I, you know, I went out to make people laugh and I, I got better at it and... You know, it was okay for a while. And the... They couldn't... I mean, they were talking about the 20... 21-year-old version of me, or the 24-year-old version of me, the 26-year-old version of me. You know, that's that's what they were talking about. Not the... 39 year old version of me who was reading these posts on Facebook and a heck of a lot's happened in those 10 years for me and for everyone of course as well and I think what it was is because one of the people what's his name he gave me a job years ago it was Christmas it was December 1991 and it was at the Elephant and Castle and my friend He's, he was like really into comedy and I think he ran a comedy club or something I forget but he had a record shop and he said did I want to help out and I thought yeah great okay it was only just for a few weeks 
but he you know, paid me a little bit of money. It was enough for me to get by and buy food and travel and stuff. And I got there and it was really cold, really windy, really rainy. And I was so glad to get inside the shopping centre. And as you go in, there was a supermarket. I think it was a Sainsbury's, but it could have been a Tesco. On the right hand side. And as you walk further up, I've not thought about this in absolutely years. As you walk further up, I think there was like a, I got a memory that it was a mobile phone shop, but there wasn't because there weren't no mob, there weren't any mobile phones in those days. Uh, but you walk through, because it was Christmas, yeah, it was Christmas time, so there was lots of uh, things inside selling uh, tinsel and stuff like that. And there was, I'm pretty sure there was uh, somebody selling perfumes. I have a memory of that for some reason. And then there was an escalator that went upstairs. And there was stuff upstairs as well. I don't remember what. I really don't, but it was... Yeah, I can't remember what was upstairs. And then the escalator. There was another escalator that went down. That went down the the back side of the uh, down the back side of the shopping centre, which was the back part. And so I walked around, but not around the escalator because it's carried on, and it was other shops and stuff. And my friend had a shop right in the middle, which was a record store, but it looked more like a like a porter cabin kind of with glass all the way around. That's why more like a greenhouse. It's full of records, and he had all these like really old records that were. You know, I would say from the 90s, but they wouldn't have been old then, would they? But stuff from the 60s and, you know, Beatles and Elvis and stuff like that. First editions. I know very little about records, really, but um, as far as, you know, selling them and stuff like that. Like that. And... I thought, oh, oh, this is all right. I said, he said, you like, what do you think about a shop? I said, it's nice. But, he said, what? I said, well, the counter's not very big, is it? He said, well, no, because I need more room for the customers and uh, for the merchandise. I can't. You know, that's why it's a small counter, you know, uh, you know, where you had the till and stuff. I don't think you haven't had a till. I think you just had a box with changing. And I said, yeah, but where am I going to stand? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, there's not enough room for me, is there? He said, you haven't got to worry about that. I said, why? He said, you're going to be standing outside. I said, what? How, what? how are the customers... I thought he was going to get me handing out leaflets or something. Which he did do at some point, but that's a different matter. And it turned out he had a trolley outside that had been waiting for me. Which was full of tapes like uh, cassette tapes I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cassette tapes boxes full 
and he basically just led me the way outside to a stall that was already already set up with a table and it had shelter no it didn't have any shelter it was just a table that's right it was just a table no shelter and all the others had shelter for some reason I didn't so I just put all the stuff down onto the table and that was my job to stand outside for from I don't know nine o'clock till five and sell tapes and I had a, a tape recorder like a tape player you know one of those like Sonic Booster I don't know probably weren't called Sonic Boosters back then I think the only probably had Sonic the Hedgehog back then didn't they but it was a, a music audio player thing and that was alright so I got to listen to music I remember I was listening to Elton John. Yeah, I was listening to Elton John's greatest hits. I mean, he, I kind of think that, imagine if if he'd have got paid every time I played his album, he'd have earned a lot of money that year, but not that he needed the money and even if he did I think definitely didn't after 1997 he earned quite a fair bit of money that year but this was 91 so I suppose he didn't realise the windfall he was going to get and profit he was going to make rehashing a really good song but turn it into a yeah so I had this job of standing outside cold so cold and I really enjoyed it. It's kind of weird, but I enjoyed it. I was, I got to know the, the man that sold fish. Uh, I got to know the man that sold ladies' underwear, and I realised then that that's probably the best job in the world. If you want to. Because at that time, all I wanted to do was meet women. And have warmer feet. But I just saw him and he was selling. I remember him because he was a boxer. And I used to talk to him. He was a boxer and he was, I think he was kind of Greek or Greek descent. And he just used to talk about it and he was a boxer and he sold ladies it wasn't just underwear it was also like dresses and tops but there was a lot of underwear there seemed to be too much underwear the you know, the clothes to underwear ratio seemed to be you know didn't seem to seem a little bit too much uh, a bit top heavy bra wise you know uh, just but that, I suppose maybe he got some kind of discounts uh, on the underwear and it's probably cheaper to buy isn't it than jeans and dresses and um, uh, f- suits or whatever else um, that people wear And 
who else was there? Ardo was the person that sold everything. He literally had, he kind of had a, a port a caravan kind of thing with a market stall as well next to it. And he just sold everything, like light bulbs, batteries. For some reason, that's the only two things I can think about. Only two things I can think that shops sell. Like the whole world was just, a world of retail revolves around light bulbs and batteries. But you know, just all those like things like plugs, are kind of a little electrical things, um, radios, and the kind of stuff that you you might spend ten ten pound for, but you'd be surprised if it actually works when you get home. It's kind of one of those moments just where you think, shall I just? flush this £10 note into the toilet or shall I give it to this man on this market stall oh, I'll just give it to the man on the market stall it saves me going to the toilet that kind of situation I think yeah, it's, it's very much a lucky dip and uh, so he was nice what other people was there there wasn't it wasn't all men there was women as well working there um, I think there was a food place that sold possibly burgers and sausages but I don't think I touched it I think I ate anything from there because even though I wasn't probably didn't have the best education I knew I knew not to eat stuff out of one of those burger vans it was uh, yeah I'll tell you what they did have facing the if you face the shopping centre entrance it might have changed I mean this is a long time ago you know, we're talking, what, 1991, it's now, what, 1999, isn't it? Or no, I know, it's 90, 2009, 2019, so if it was 89, 99, 2009, 2019, that'd be 30 years. 1991, so it's eight, 28 years ago, nearly, that I was there. So I think it's a fair assumption that not one of the people that was working there then are still there now. Well, that could be wrong. I mean, the bloke's selling underwear. He might be uh, chatting the old ladies up saying, I used to be a boxer, you know, I used to be a boxer. I used to have a great left jab. I say that like he'd be old, he'd be probably be my age. He was probably only about 23, 24. And I don't sound like, ow. Can you imagine what it's going to be like in the future when I'm making these recordings? when I'm 70 or 80 hello welcome to let me bore you to sleep I'll just be falling asleep myself oh, still people will be complaining oh, I never used to sound like that I used to sound a lot younger that's because I was a lot younger I love that. It's one of the things, one of my favourite things in the world is people that whisper shout. You know, people actually, will you stop doing that? 
and they're shouting but they're whispering at the same time I used to have someone at work that did that it was called his surname was Alan I don't remember his first name but he was one of the top sellers and I tried to sell like him and I didn't have his ability you know what his ability was you know his sales technique to put absolutely no effort in whatsoever it do a quotation and at the end of it it says do you want it then that was it and he was one of the top sellers but the way he asked it is he didn't care he sounded like he didn't care not like in a rude way but just in a it was so un pushy the opposite to pushy He used to, uh, he used to whisper shout, especially if someone's being noisy. He's like, "Will you stop talking? I'm trying to talk to a customer." It was like, it's, he honestly is like, "Oi, over here, Bob, I need your help." I actually thought that maybe he had some kind of throat operation, but he could talk. And the reason I know that is because I used to listen to his calls. That was part of my job. It's very funny as well. It's very, very, very humorous. And uh, if you're facing, well, if you were, facing the Elephant and Castle shopping centre on the left hand side there was or facing if you move your eyes to the left there was a pub called the Charlie Chaplin now I don't know if it's still there it might be but my friend my boss at the time or whatever he started a comedy club at the Charlie Chaplin I think it was called Comedy at the Charlie Chaplin and he got me handing out leaflets and I helped I was going to say I helped run it but I didn't I just helped set up put the chairs out and stuff like that and then next to that there was it's kind of like an American style diner and I can fairly pretty much say because I had I met a few females while I was doing that job and I ended up dating two but the one I really wanted to date I didn't end up dating and what's really weird this is going to sound strange this and I'm going to say girl because they were all young as well they were all kind of 17, 16, 17 18, something like that legal age in my country so they were all legal but you know it was, I was 20 whatever and this lady, this woman girl, whatever she used to always keep hugging me and like kissing me on the cheek and I'd gotten so well with her but she had a boyfriend so I just you know it's didn't didn't even think you know consider anything because you know I got on a okay with her boyfriend and uh, that was it but and she, then she got pregnant and you know that was it 
But she had the face that I've always, I wasn't attracted to her type of face before I met her. I don't think. But when I met her, it's like it imprinted on my brain. And I can't, I'm not going to explain her face. Um, but when I meet somebody that has a similar type of face, I just, a part of me, part of my heart melts. And it's not, it's, it's kind of, I think it's part of kind of what could have been, you know, kind of, oh, if I had a, if I'd maybe told her that I liked her and before she got pregnant and, you know, I don't know, but I really liked her. I can't remember her name. But she was one of these people who was always pleased to see me. And I've not had a lot of that in my life, to be honest. And I've got a, even Andre is not that interested in seeing me. And he's my boy. So she always always the only yeah, I never person probably was my grandmother. She was always pleased to see me. That's why it's good to get a dog, I suppose. I'm not comparing my grandmother to a dog. I'm just saying that if you get yourself a dog, they're pleased to see you. And if you want to come home to someone that's pleased to see you, don't get a ferret. Because he doesn't even come out to see me. When I come home, the only time he comes out to greet me is if he wants me to give him some food or if he wants me to take him out for a walk. And that's it. Well, that I guess is not totally true. Sometimes he does seem to want to play or have a cuddle. But then if I sit in my chair... He will come out and he'll jump on me and play around and give me kisses and stuff and cuddle up and, you know, so I should stop moaning about him, but he's not, it's definitely nothing like a dog. He's kind of a mixture, we'd say, between a cat and a dog, but he's not, he's a ferret, he's a, well, he's kind of a hybrid pole cat ferret basically just a wild animal that's been they're born wild you know dogs they're born and stray away they're just beautiful and loving and you know they love human company ferrets they want nothing to do with humans hate being touched hate being held Even now, he sort of pushes me away sometimes. I'm trying to eat, Dad. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to sleep, Dad. I'm trying to sleep. You know? It's like, yeah, but I've got you because I want to cuddle you. So why don't you get yourself a teddy bear? Which I found very rude. I thought it was a very rude thing to say. But anyway... This, uh, that's the end of another recording. So maybe you could leave a comment on the podcast. If you do like what I'm doing, if you think, maybe you think I should do something different. It's hard to gauge it though because people listen. Regularly, you know, thousands of downloads a week just on this podcast. 
thousands of mounds and one well, like thousands and thousands, but you're looking at I don't know. Yeah, thousands. I don't know how many. So it's kind of like, well, would people be listening if they didn't like it? Because that would be that'd be very weird, wouldn't it? And I've also had probably more f- positive feedback for this podcast than I have for anything else I've ever done. And I think the ratio of people that like what I do and people that actually will send a comment or write a comment it's the ratio is much higher for people not to send a comment so for every few hundred people or maybe more I might get one person might leave a comment So I'm going to try and mix it up a bit, like I said. Andre's decided to come out to play, so I'm going to go before he starts getting noisy. Too late. But as you can hear him. <laughs> 